Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of training information. So this video came about because I watched two GCN videos. One was back in February and one was released August 27th. So I watched the August 27th first and then I went back to link back to the first video of February. And in this video, I guess series in these two videos they talked about how one kilometer of weight I'm sorry one kilogram of weight wouldn't be as important as five watt increase in your FTP and so I said okay well this sounds an interesting concept it's a weight power argument so let's see what's going on so I watched both videos I collected the data put it up on the dry ease board to present it to you. And then I realized they didn't really prove their point. <laughs> uh, once you you if you use the data that they provided. So then I thought, OK, maybe what I'll do is interpret this data. I mean, they've already collected it, which is usually the, the hard part. Although I'd love to be in Europe climbing, but but they collected the data and now let's see how else we could use it. And I wish to present to you a different argument altogether. So let's go through the first video and then the second video, and then we'll go through some analysis. So first thing, the first video was a 14 kilometer climb, which uh, Alex called a belter. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's that's interesting because that's only like 8.7 miles. That's not that far. That's not that long of a climb. And it got me thinking, you know, I Everested uh, Palomar Mountain, which is a, depending on where you start, but I did the 11.7 mile segment, average 7% grade. So that's about 19 kilometer climb at about the same grade. And I did, you know, seven plus repeats on it to get to 29,000 feet. In case you don't know what Everesting is, you take one climb and you do repeats on it, same day, same sitting until you get to 29,000. So I Everested something longer than that. And I've done nine Everests, by the way. Okay, so I digress. Here is Ollie, one kilogram, one kilogram of system weight from 83 to 84 kilograms. His time, 56.40 for the first attempt, 55 seconds slower on the second attempt for one kilogram of system weight. We're gonna cover that in a sec. So 55 seconds over 14 kilometers comes out to about four seconds per kilometer slower. Now let's talk about system weight because I think this is really important. System weight, rider, bike, bottles, clothing, toolkit, computers, lights, everything. One system going up the mountain. So let's make sure that we understand how negligible one kilogram is when you consider it as a system weight. For years, I've, so, I've sold steel bikes to people, in particular like the Ritchie Logic and other bikes. And when people start talking about, oh, but that's so much heavier than a carbon bike. Look how light, look, if the bike was going up the mountain by itself, or I should say, if the frame was going up the mountain by itself, yeah, that's a valid argument. But the frame, can't move without a component group and guess what a rider on it pedaling it so if you take a carbon frame and put it on a scale and then put a steel frame and put it on a scale yes of course a steel frame weighs more but once you do the full system weight steel frames or steel road bikes are not even a kilogram heavier than a than a especially now with the carbon disc brake bike so please don't obsess about weight and so we're talking the system weight i just compared steel frames 
but people obsess about a couple of hundred grams when it comes to maybe a handlebar or you know 50 grams on a saddle it's not that important so one kilogram of weight only slowed the rider down by 55 seconds which was about four seconds per kilometer on a different day which is part of the issues i have about this data but that's okay on a different day on a different mountain they did the experiment where they added five watts of power as opposed to one kilogram of weight five five watts of power on a 6.8 grade for only 4.8 kilometers so again length of the climb was different the grade was different the weather conditions were most assuredly different tarmac conditions uh, you know, hopefully they use the same bike, same tires, same tire pressure. You know, there's a lot of variables, right? So I just want to make that point clear. But that 20 second difference between 250 and 255 watts, 20 seconds divided by five kilometers, just rounding up, is four seconds. Four seconds, four seconds, you know, it didn't, it didn't make that much. So I said, well, wait a minute. And oh, by the way, from 250 watts to 255, that's only a 2% increase in your wattage output, right? Two times 25 is five, right? In percentage basis. Okay, so that's 255. Most people could improve 2%, even 5% in their um, FTP. But at a certain point, you just can't squeeze <laughs> that much juice out of a lemon. So we're going to take this data and we're kind of going to say, OK, yeah, we can increase power. But based on, you know, using maybe latex tubes in your tires or they mentioned summer tires, winter tires. So like, let's say a GP 5000 and a continental gator skin the comparison there they said at least five watts uh you know if you're looking at things that are more than or dirty drivetrain as well and if you're looking at things that are more than five watts then you know standing up and and climbing standing which you could i could do it on a three mile climb there's no way i'm going to do it on a nearly nine mile climb and uh, and having your jersey open and flapping in the wind. So these aerodynamic uh, uh, things that would create more drag would be more than a five watt difference. So, I mean, just zip up your jersey. You've saved five watts according to them. I think that that's fair. So this is the data they provided. But let's do this. Let's do something else. So let's just say that... Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a strong proponent of not buying expensive, like for example, carbon wheels or things like this to try to reduce the bike by one pound or half a kilogram. I'm more about, hey, let's look at, let's say, body weight instead. So. If we make this, this assumption here that one kilogram per kilometer slows you down by four seconds, okay, well, what if, that's my chicken scratch notes here, what if you weigh 10 kilograms more and your total time would be 10 times 55, So that's 550 seconds for the entire climb. Divide that by 14. That's 39 seconds per kilometer that you are slower because you weigh 10, kilometer, uh, 10 kilograms more. So that's 39 seconds per kilometer. Well, if we do five, if 
55 kilograms. 5 times 55. I believe that was 270 something. Whatever that was. Anyway, it comes out to 20 seconds per kilometer if you are just 5 kilograms heavier than you should be. 5 kilograms isn't much. I mean, that could be the difference between winter weight, summer weight. 10 kilograms, yeah, that's a little bit more, but people get out of shape. I know when I crashed and broke my femur, I gained quite a bit of weight. I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> but it's more important, in my opinion, because you're not going to be able to increase your FTP by too much unless you're a new cyclist and you are just moving along and you have a lot of increment, um, significant improvement in your riding ability. But most of it's gonna come from weight loss. It's not gonna come from the widget that you wanna spend another thousand dollars for, okay? So, if it's four seconds per kilometer for one kilogram, for five kilograms, it's 20 seconds per kilometer. And then for 10 kilograms, it's 39 seconds per kilometer. Well, let's do one more thing about weight, just for fun. Now, when we go out on our Saturday endurance rides, as an endurance pace, I like to keep the group at about three watts per kilogram. And because we all weigh different weights, three watts per kilogram means if you're looking at your computer, whether you weigh 100 kilograms or whether you weigh 60 kilograms, at three watts per kilogram, we should be really close to each other, you know, in, in a pack, right? But what if we have a rider that's 80 kilograms at three watts per kilogram? That means that rider needs to hold 240 watts to ride with us. Now we have another rider at 75 kilograms. Same thing, three. That's 225, abbreviate watts. And then lastly, a 70 kilogram rider, that's 210. Now I chose this for a reason, but you know, you should aspire to ride at three watts per kilo for your six hour training ride and see what that feels like. But hear me out because this is where this gets a little bit more interesting so if you are a rider that weighs 80 kilograms and you lose five kilograms right so now you're a 75 pound rider you used to be 75 kilogram you used to be able to hold 225 watts let's make the assumption you haven't lost muscle but you've lost fat 225 watts so two two five divided by let's see what i did here because i want to make sure i have some uh information for you okay so the 200 ah actually what i did was i chose the 80 kilogram rider so 240 watts is what he used to be able to, to ride at. But now he weighs 70 kilograms, so he's lost 10 kilograms. Now, instead of that three watts per kilogram, he's actually holding four, 3.4 watts per kilogram. And why is this important? Well, because all things being equal if that 
80 kilogram rider now weighs 70 kilograms, we could fairly say that he should be able to hold that 240 watts again. And now his watts per kilogram is 3.4. Now he's actually riding faster than he used to for the same wattage because now he weighs 10 kilograms less and he's holding 3.4 fairly easily. But even if he wanted to hold three watts per kilogram, then he's holding 210, right? 70 kilogram rider holding 210 watts. That should be a lot more comfortable to ride with the same group of people he was riding with, but he's only having to hold 210 watts now instead of 240 watts. That's a 30 watt difference and it's significant and he should be more comfortable. And I say he just because an 80 kilogram lady is, is not that common. So we know that um, male cyclists can be 80, 80 kilograms fairly easily. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about a couple of things in the, in the kilogram loss of the system weight, or in this case, the rider weight, far more important than trying to increase, like their argument was, oh, you know, five watts is, is, is more important than a kilogram of weight, and yes, okay, maybe, but there's only so much power you can increase. So to get that power to weight ratio better, you gotta drop the system weight. And more specifically, the rider weight. Before you spend thousands of dollars to drop one kilogram of weight off of your bike. Okay, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. Please throw some comments down below. Am I just talking nonsense? Is this gobbledygook? Do you need me to explain it a different way? Please let me know. In the meantime, we'll see you up the road.